Okay, this is on the crab job, number 54230, installed on 719 by Gilbert. Um, and I'll have to look at the hours. This may take more than a day, I'm not sure. Um, seems like everything's hard on it. So, um, the new furnace will sit ten and a half inches to the two by six wall. Um, the back of the furnace will be seven and a half inches to the two by to the wall, wood wall. Um, furnace will sit on a base. Furnace. Then we have a six inch transition. The existing coil. Make sure the coil is clean and a piece of duct, canvas, and a transition. So, um, the new furnace, the edge of the furnace will sit here, the transition will come to here. It's gonna be a transition like that. So, keep that in mind when you run the flue, because you have to redo these flues. Um, okay. So I have your cut line from front to back at the edge and then one inch from this side and then right there. So um, anyway, then we have the filter box. I'm giving more explanation because it's Gilbert. I don't know how familiar are you are with the way we do this, but the filter box put flush with the back and then the bottom we go half inch up so this bottom lip is flush with the bottom. Um, anyway, then a 90. So, and then duck just as it shows. So out of the back of this 90, so they have a return air right here. Um, and they have a filter grill right here, right on the other side of here. So you need to take out this filter and instruct them to not put a filter in here anymore. And, um, but this is the top view. So you need to, I'll give you a piece of panning. No, I won't. You're just gonna use the duct right against the wall as you're panning, then put a duckboard header, cut out the back of the duct. So this will be a 90 um, straight piece. Cut out a 12 by 12 hole in here and in the back top part of the boot. Um, just about a 12 by 12. Um, and then end cap here, end cap here, and then seal it to the wall. Okay. And duct just as it shows. So. Okay. So everything's kind of tough and in a way on this one. So to get a filter box, you have to move everything over. I'm hoping you don't have to cut the line set, but you may have to since it's moving over a few inches, but I also raised it up six inches or like five and a, almost six inches I raised it up. So if you can get a, the bend on it and move it over a little bit and not cut it, that'd be great, that'd be best. If you need to cut it, I gave you a filter dryer. Make sure the coil is clean underneath. Um, but combustion air. So I can't see it from here. I saw the grill outside. And so there's a combustion air back here somewhere. I just can't get to it to see it. Um, but I did see the grill. So we're okay there. Um, so, on the water heater vents, so we need to change these water heaters to 4 inch. 
aluminum. And to do that, we are going to remove all these T's and get rid of them. So from the top here, Okay, so that's from the top, you're going to have a six by five reducer. And I give you a six inch piece of five inch, just in case you need it. And then a five inch 90. Um, then I give you a 30 and another six, just in case you need it. I, I measured 36, but I'm not sure what angle you're going to be on. I don't want you to go in front of the door, of course. Um, and then another 90. And just kind of slope it down um, over to the water heater. Give you another 36 inch by 5 inch. Then a 5 by 4 T. 5 by 4 reducer. Um, and give you a draft hood connector. And... Uh, Run this one to one water heater, give you a draft hood, and run this to the other water heater in aluminum. So, water heater there and one here. Um, just keep in mind that we have a starting collar right here. It's going to come like that. So, keep your pipe low enough that we're not going to hit that starting collar. But, you're probably going to have to re redo all that before you do any of this dock so you can even get back there. Also, <clears throat> okay, so that's that. So on the furnace vent, this took me a very long time to figure out. Um, so on the furnace vent, to get out, I think we're gonna have to go out the north. Dang it, the light just died. Well, the north, so we'll have to go out this way. And you can see we have this vent right here. And we have a exhaust fan right there. Um, notice the two can lights. So, up by up by the uh, flu, um, that's where I think we can come down. And double check when you get everything ripped out, look back there, because those other places, if we have open bays, um, I just can't get back there to even look. So if this, you know, one of these bays is open to shoot flus back, that would be great. But, um, so right here, just to give you a heads up, we have this gap here between the walls and that goes all the way out. But there's exhaust fans and dryer vents already run through there. And it doesn't look feasible to me to get through there. So, what I figured, and it sucks that my light just died. They kind of need it. But you can get the gist. We have, have this uh, access panel right here. And if you look, there's the flues right here. Um, and so I think if we have to, we can get two three inch pipes through here. Um, so in this one here, we've got a heat run and that exhaust fan. So I believe in this run is probably open. There's nothing outside, but we do have those can lights and I don't know how deep they are, but I'm guessing we can go beside them. Um, but if you can get a different way, that'd be great. You know, if you see something else open when you rip this out. Um, but I'll show you outside. 
so the air conditioner is back here as well. I'll show you outside where I think this exhaust fan is. Now let's do that last in, in a minute. Sorry, this video's kind of taking a long time. That's okay though. Okay, so the gas. So we're keeping this humidifier, but we're going to move it to the return air. And our new um, return air drop is actually four inches longer than this one. And also has a starting collar. So on the gas right here, you're going to remove this nipple and remove this nipple. And you're going to switch them. Put this nipple here and this nipple here. So we have 18 inches down and then 12 inches over. And put this over kind of at an angle so our humidifier, so the gas is coming up off beside the duct so we can get our humidifier on the return air drop. Um, okay. So yeah, just switch those two, and then we hook up the gas as it is. It's just going to be over right here instead, but it'll probably be up forward more, four inches. Well, yeah, it'll be up a ways more, but you get the gist. Okay, then, then from the cock, this cock cock's now going to be like over here somewhere so from the cock you're going to add a two inch a t with a drip leg and then uh i think i gave you a six inch in flex um and then i give you a 12 inch out the furnace and i'll give you a 90 um so with all that you can make it work Okay, um, okay, so the AC, um, we're leaving it as is. Make sure the coil is clean. I give you a filter dryer if you need to cut the line. Drain will be to the floor. So, Standard order, but you have a humidifier tying into it as well. So we'll just take this off and we'll put an easy trap, um, you know, 45 with an easy trap. And then um, T into our new furnace as well. Thermostat, um, we'll change the thermostat to a Honeywell T6 Pro two stage. Right now they have five wires going to it. Um, the last T6 Pro I did said it needed a common. So you may have to pull a new wire depending on, on this uh, T6 Pro. <laughs> may have to pull a new wire to get the two stage and the common. But pull a new wire if you can, but check to make sure it needs a common first. Um, So the power, you're going to reuse a switch box and cover. Give you two box connectors for your flex. <coughs> um, humidifier, just move to the return air. Give you a five feet of six inch and two six inch 90s. And uh, just tie it back in where you can. Um, Let's see. I think this one. Yeah, you can turn it. I think you can turn this upside down. Maybe not. Okay, well, maybe I'll give you 490s because I don't know if you can turn that one upside down for that. 
take it, it coming off the, oh yeah, you can actually, I remember. So, so yeah, you just reverse, take it apart and reverse these um, covers. So this one goes on this side, this side goes on that side with those screws right there. I remember I've done that before. Then you can bring it out this side. Make sure you use this damper that comes with it. Um, make sure it's working as well. Okay, and so let's go outside and look at those flues. They do have a basement access here. Mm -hmm. Right here, to the kitchen. Okay, so you can see where the dryer vents are and the other ones. That's that little space in between the back walls. I believe this is the vent for um, that other vent in the bathroom. Um, so, so keep that in mind. Here's our line set. You can see that from in there. So I believe our vents are going to come out somewhere right here to a flat termination. So you're going to have to open the siding. I would open the siding first and just make sure that it is clear on both sides before you drill this hole out here and make sure you have a clear shot. Um, so there's our combustion air right there. So there's other options if for some reason we can't get our foods out here um, and we there's nothing here. You know, we could run them out through the combustion air and uh, but I just can't see what size the pipe is because for two water heaters we probably only need a six inch round combustion air but they'd be terminating out here um, so maybe take off that combustion air grill first and just see, assess what the combustion air does. Once you get the furnace out, you can probably see it from the other side, but assess what that does. If it's not even piped and just an open joist, well, great, let's run right through that one. <coughs> but if not, over here's where we want. Okay. Um, just remember when you run these flues, we have to be um, four feet from the dryer vents. So this one is a dryer vent. Those two I think are exhaust fans. Um, okay, thanks.